How y'all doing this morning? Blessed. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice. We are glad in it. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for this day you've made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. Father, we thank you for this word that we are about to receive that you have prepared for us. Holy Spirit, right now we decrease that you, the greater one in us, may increase. We ask that you have your way here today. That is our prayer. And God, when you do what you always do, we'll be careful to give you alone the praise, the honor, the glory, the adoration for everything that is accomplished and for all that shall be revealed. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Would you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I see some smiles in the audience today? Hallelujah. Amen. I see them. I see them. I see them. Um, I still got my Barry White voice on, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll get it for one more week in Jesus' name. Uh, maybe the Lord's changing my voice. I need a more uh, apostolic voice or something. I don't know. Maybe God be the glory. Hallelujah. But, um, you know, hey, seasons. Everybody say seasons. seasons. You know, we go through different seasons and time zone, uh, time changes and season changes. And you can always feel the effects of the seasons changing in Jesus name. Uh, but it's our it's our job as believers to overcome and triumph in all seasons in Jesus name. Amen. So that's what we do here at the Bridge Church. So that's what your pastor is leading by example to do in Jesus name. And as we see, we got praise leaders that are doing the same thing. Praise God. We're not going to let our praise be stolen. And, and all our words be uh, hindered in Jesus' name. And that's what we just pray. Nothing will hinder this word from going forth in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Can y'all help me? Well, Pastor A's off on another assignment, so uh, we'll just appreciate her. Uh, go ahead and give Pastor A a hand clap. Thank you <laughs> her for coming. Amen. For those of y'all that don't know, I'm Pastor Jermaine, and uh, Pastor A and I go together. Praise the Lord. We'll be celebrating 25 years in August. Hallelujah. Of wonderful <laughs> wedded bliss. Amen. And uh, looking forward to being able to pray for over some married couples and engaged couples today at the end of our service. So if you came for that, then uh, that'll happen toward the end of our, of, of our service in Jesus' name. Uh, do you have your Bibles with you today? Would you lift them high? Repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. I am, I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I am a doer, not just a hearer. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I can tell I got some faith folk in the house today. Amen. I hear y'all's faith. I can hear y'all's faith. I can see your faith in Jesus' name. Amen. And so I thank God for that. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't take a whole, whole lot uh, for God to work with in Jesus' name. You know, he, he'll work with whatever you have. And so um, there's, there's some little faith, and then there's great faith, and then there's all of us in between in Jesus' name. And so wherever your faith is today, God said, I'm going to meet you at that level. We're going to grow it to the next level in Jesus' name because be it unto you according to your faith. And so we got to raise the level of our expectation and some things that we believe in God for so that we can go to the next level in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're going to do a quick review from last week. Anybody enjoy the message on last week? Let love lead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many of y'all were tested? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Where you had to let your, your God-given image supersede your flesh in a few moments. Hallelujah. Anybody flesh want to rise up and do some things last week that you caught it? Hallelujah. Come on, y'all rejoice with them that rejoice. In Jesus' name. Good job. I'm proud of y'all. Uh, so last week we, uh, we, we started talking about, you know, letting love leave in our life, and we unpacked a little bit of 1 Corinthians 13 that talks all about love and as Pastor A mentioned we just been we've been on this love journey so Holy Spirit just keeps adding another week to it add another week to it I'm not sure which one of y'all is the cause for that <laughs> or how many of y'all 
it is in Jesus name. Uh, but we had, a, you know, at our church, we, we, the, the word says, uh, man plans or devises his way, but the Lord orders his steps, right? So we're never going to be so uh, shackled to a program that we don't do what God says to do. So if God says, hey, one more week of this, then guess what we're going to do? We're going to do one more week of this in Jesus' name, even if it's for the one that hadn't got it yet in Jesus' name. Because Jesus led by example to say, I'll leave the 99 and go after the one. So one of the things that we're concerned about at the bridge is that we all go together. Everybody say we go together. No, nobody's left behind at the bridge and you should feel that you should feel that love you should feel that family um, and we work hard to create an environment where people feel like a part of the family feel loved feel blessed feel honored feel thought of feel cared for all that good stuff and so prayerfully even if it's your first time here you can already feel the love in the place because love is God and God is love and we as his people have to now take that image on and let love lead in a different kind of way because some of us have been letting flesh lead, have been letting uh, old habits lead, have been letting what grandmama and them said lead, have been letting whatever it is, I don't want, I don't feel like it lead. It letting, you know, I just ain't, that's just who I am. We let that lead and we see the effects of what that does to our society whenever the people of God can't even bear down in faith and evoke or um, uh, solicit from God a God response in situations, then man, we're in trouble. Say amen, somebody. So that's why God has us laying out in this is that we're not concerned about just preaching a message that you're going to run around and be excited about and, you know, praise the Lord. I could really hoop with this voice. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Ooh, Lord. I, I mean, I could, I could make that thing work, right? I could make that thing go right now with this voice, right? But guess what? At the end of the day, if we all just get in here and feel warm and fuzzy and have good church but don't leave changed, then we just add to the problem rather than being God's solution to the world's issues in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to want to be the one that God can call on when he need to change something for his his good and for his glory and do something that's going to actually shift the atmosphere in the earth. That's what we are about here at the Bridge Church. So we've decided to let love lead. All right. Uh, so uh, go now go in your Bibles to um, we're going to start today at, um, at 1 John um, because who you are is love. Everybody say, who I am, who I am. Is, love. is love. Now, in order to really, like, you know, uh, embrace that, then you got to, you know, you got to get in the Word and, and really, the, the Word says, the washing of the water by the word, right? Washing with the water by the word. Like, like we have to be, the old man has to be eradicated, right? Uh, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become what? New. Where is that found at? Come on. Uh-huh. So that's what I was just. So this is the part of the message today is to kind of start getting us in the mindset of we need to know some, where these, you know, it's good to, to have it memorized, but I'm realizing some of y'all got half of it memorized because I'll say the first half. And then you'll say, the, you know, it's kind of that reciting back and forth, uh, praise the Lord. But you say it, you just, you, you just, you say it. If, go ahead. If it. If any man be in, go ahead, keep going. He, he is a new creature. Come on. Oh, see, I, see, I knew it. <laughs> Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Right? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. 
behold, all things are become new, right? So I'm going to stop saying half of it and <laughs> make y'all say the whole thing because when we, um, you know, part of what the lesson today is that uh, when we hide the word in our heart, David said, I've hid the word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So, right, so I have hid the word in my heart that I might not sin against you, right? So you say it. Good. Say it again. Okay. Psalm, come on. Uh huh. This is the Brenda. She let me know. She was been studying. She like, Pastor, I got them scriptures down. Psalm one nineteen. What? Eleven. Okay. Psalm one nineteen. Eleven. Y'all start writing notes because this is ultimately where we're gonna end up. Is that there's some there's some um, there's some scriptures that you're gonna need to live your life by. Because Matthew 4 4 says, mm -hmm. it is written. Now, who is this talking? What, what color are those letters? There's red, there's Jesus. Now, what was the context here? He was in the middle of being tempted by the devil. Anybody been tempted by the devil? How about yesterday? How about this week? How about, you know, praise the Lord? How about right for this morning? <laughs> right? And if in the moment of temptation, Jesus responded with the word, it is written to come against the enemy's attack against his life, right, and his assignment. Man shall not live by what? Because the enemy had offered him a morsel of bread after he had fasted for 40 days. So we have an adversary. Who is he? Where is it found? Roaring as a lion, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resisted steadfast in the faith, right? So, where's it found? Anybody found it yet? Uh huh. I got it written down, but this is what we got to do. It, we got to understand what's going on. We have an adversary, the devil. Jesus had an adversary, the devil. He was coming against him every way he could. In the moment that he tempted him, there was a resistance that was needed. So now, that who, who God was, Jesus in the flesh, you know, God in the flesh, which was Jesus, had to prevail at that moment. He had to resist that attack against him, right? How did he resist it? With the word, Matthew what? 4-4. Four, four. We gonna call it the fofo. There's another fofo that you need, too. We go into it in a minute. Um, because I have scriptures that I have memorized because I have a certain type of fight. Your fight may be different than my fight, but how many of you know that there is a solution to every fight that you face? And where is it found? In the Word. So, and where, how do I know that? Because 1 Corinthians 10, 13 lets us know that there is no test, trial, or temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But with the temptation, God will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear up under it. So 1 Corinthians 10, 13, write that down. Are y'all seeing what's happening right now? What's happening? As we're talking about different things and moving throughout this, even the, throughout the message and the concept of us living by um, faith and walking in love like God wants us to, guess what we're going to need in order to do it? The Word. Because our response to the devil's temptation, we know it's common. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, let us know that. So these are the scriptures that you need to hide in your heart because now when the devil comes at you and say, see, you just worth it. I mean, I can't believe you did that. 
Shut up, devil. I ain't the only one. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, there is no temptation taking me but such as is common to man. Are y'all awake today? Amen. Right? So when the enemy comes at you with these different things, whatever, he knows he been knowing you since you was here. So he knows every, look, I can't ever, if I could sit down with everybody and find out everybody's story and, and I could give everybody a prescribed plan because, oh, you had some issues when you were little and praise the Lord, that's why you're fearful in these areas. That's why you respond like this. That's why you don't want to open up to nobody. That's why you kind of guard it. That's why you get what I'm saying. If I could sit down with every person individually and just unpack every day, every moment of your life that has led up to this point, then I can prescribe you, uh, you know, a systematic, hey, these are the scriptures you need to live by because the enemy gonna hit you with this, this, and that. But guess, guess whose responsibility that is? That's your responsibility. Here's your other fofo, First Thessalonians 4.4. 4. What does it say? That every one of what? You should what? Know how to possess your vessel in what? And say, I told I, okay, okay, let me go. Y'all go read the whole thing. Go ahead. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel, his male and female, in sanctification and in honor. So, guess what you need to do about you? You need to figure out. Did y'all find out the adversary of the devil scripture? Which, what is it? First Peter 5, 8. We have an adversary, the devil. He's looking for folk that's trying to do this faith thing. That's why he came at Jesus, because if he could knock Jesus off, then he got the whole thing. You know, he, he praise the Lord. He don't have to go after nobody else. Because Jesus was our Savior. Jesus is our Lord, right? He's the one everything is hanging on. So I knocked the curtain rod down, and the curtain going to fall too. Right? But Jesus withstood. How did he do it? Where is it found? Come on, that was our first 4 4. It's in Matthew 4 4. It's in Luke 4 4 too. I think Mark may, it may be in, uh, it may be in the first three of the Gospels in four, chapter 4, verse 4. I was like, wow. Uh, at least two of them. Okay. All right. So, what are we already hearing the Lord saying today? We need to know more word if we're going to be victorious in more things and in more areas and in more situations. Now, how many of y'all did your homework last week? I gave y'all a bunch of scriptures and told y'all to go home and everybody here went down. <laughs> I'm not gonna make you raise your hand. Actually, I was hoping somebody would raise their hand, but I'm gonna say I'm not gonna make you raise your hand because nobody raised their hand. Hallelujah. Sister Brenda already let me know she did her homework. She was like, man, you don't mind if I tell her? She's like, she's like, Pastor, I was upset because you picked all the scriptures I didn't know. And, uh, and she's like, I know, so I've been doing good, right? But how many of you know the enemy going to find that one area that he can slip in with, right? That's why we say, that's why the word says we don't even give him a toehold. We don't even let him in. We don't, we don't, look, we make it, we checking everything. We making sure everything is intact. No way the devil can get in here in Jesus' name. And that's why, that's why Pastor A and I so guarded the way we are. Some folk can't handle us. Why? Yes, too much. That's too much. But for me to stand up here and say, we've been, we, in August, we're gonna be married 25 years. 
And to this day, hallelujah, I have not even so much as had a compromising conversation with another woman. Are you with me today? You know why? That's intentional. We set up encampments. <laughs> we decided, you know what? We can nip this in the bud by just being together all the time because ain't nobody going to try nothing foolish when we together. Some day till, still do every now and then, you know what I mean, try to find a way. But guess what? That covered 90% of it right there, right? Usually when you see me, who Pastor A ain't, ain't far, she ain't far behind, right? Y'all think that's by chance? No, that's intentional. You see Pastor A, guess what? I'm somewhere in the building. <laughs> Amen. But a lot of folk, guess what? They can't handle that. I need my a long time. I need, <laughs> I need my me time. And that's good. You know, I mean, I'm not saying you got to be, you know, in the same space, sucking up the same air at every second of the day. Y'all with me? But when the words say the two have become one, we, are, we function like one. So if we're not in the same room, guess what? I know where you at. I know where, you know, we keeping tabs. Hey, praise the Lord. Hey, how you doing? You know, I'm making sure that she's never off my mind. You get what I'm saying? And vice versa. Because it's in those moments when I let my thoughts go elsewhere that the enemy can, Ephesians 6, slip a fiery dart in and try to come in while my guard is down. Are y'all with me? All right. So I guess we're just talking this morning because I hadn't gotten none of my notes yet. We was... <laughs> We were supposed to review. Um, so last week, let's, let's just do that real quick. And we're just going to go with, with the Holy Spirit and see, you know, how, where he wants us to go. So last week we talked about there's several areas that we need to uh, possess our vessel when it comes to overcoming uh, the flesh and walking in love and letting love lead. And so number one was selfishness. Y'all remember that last week? Um, so number one, selfish, selfishness. Number two was what? pride. Number three was what? Prejudice. These were the scriptures that y'all are supposed to go and just kind of look at. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody here go down again. Glory to God. Keep on moving. Number four is the what? Fear of man. Number five, we said anger and resentment. A lot of folks raised their hand on that one. Number six, materialism. Now that was a big one because a lot of the reason we don't have grace for other folk is because we're spending it all trying to get stuff for ourselves. we using all our effort and energy trying to come up. Hallelujah. And yes, you, you know, the word says we, we, you know, we can expect to have things in this life. But if we expend all our energy on ourselves and we have no grace for anybody else, then no wonder we short with folk. No wonder we snapping at people because we've you expended all of our grace that God has given us that mercy is new. His mercy is new every what? Every morning. Where is that found? Uh-huh. See, so, so, oh, Jesus, I'm about to step on some toes. His mercy is new every morning. Anybody say, I'm just not a morning person? <laughs> Thank you, Pastor A. Well, if nobody can mess with you in the morning, you just gave the enemy four hours. And guess what? The folk in your life know it. Don't fool with them for they had their coffee because 
ooh, Jesus, right? You might not want to catch them before lunch. You got folk planning around your temperamental nature. Ask, don't ask them nothing until the afternoon, because, well, as believers, guess what? We can either say, I'm not a morning person, or we can say, well, bless God, his mercy is new every morning. Hallelujah. I'm st I decide I'm going to walk in the new mercies of God. I will bless the Lord, Psalm 34, 1. At all times, his praise shall what? Continue. That just, that just signs you up for every second. So you should never catch me in a bad mood if I'm doing Psalm 34.1 because I'm just going through my day what? Blessing the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. But how many of y'all really, y'all, like y'all can't stand that person that be like, hallelujah, all the time? <laughs> My Lord, Jesus, God. I mean, do you have to say that every time? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> how you doing? I'm doing blessed in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, there they go. I just want to be, I just want to have my pity party over here, and they're going to come in here talking about hallelujah and praise the Lord and all that good stuff, right? So we got some work to do, right? Because that should be us. People should be irritated at us because we blessing the Lord at what? At all times. Hallelujah. You ain't going to catch me down. Amen. Hallelujah. But this is the same guy that says, I have hid your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Where's that one found? I don't think I wrote that one down. Psalm 119.11. Okay, Sister Brenda had us. So if we really are doing this thing, then if we're working around blessing the Lord at all times and his praise is continually being in my mouth, are we going to be caught in sin? Because I hid his word in my heart that I might not sin against him. So this is how we work this word in our life is that every situation that comes up that's contrary to the word of God, I need to have a word to counteract that and stand up against it. Say amen, somebody. Amen. All right. So and, and that's, uh, that's 1 Corinthians, casting down imaginations. I think that's 10, 4, or 5, 4, uh, praise God. What is it? 10, 10, 4, and 5. Casting down imaginations in every thought. Oh, we got some good students in the house. Hallelujah. Casting down, come on, y'all say it. Casting down vain imaginations and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and it takes it a step further bringing every thought into captivity into the obedience of Christ So if we, so y'all see how Psalm 34 and 1 Corinthians 10 work together, right? Because I will bless the Lord at what? All times. That's every second, right? Taking every what? Thought captive. So as I'm going throughout my day, blessing the Lord at all times, and, the enemy, and our adversary who? The devil comes at me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I got the word for everything you coming at me with in the name of Jesus, right? And matter of fact, I saw you coming, so I'm casting that thought down in the name of Jesus. I'm gonna bustle right, right quick because I see her coming across the parkway, park, parking lot with skin on, look like, I mean, Lord Jesus. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I understand you was working out, 
But can you put something over it, all of that? You know what I mean? Just like leave nothing to the imagination. So rather than me go right up to it and just watch it walk by, guess what? There's a whole lot of parking spots over here. I might have to walk a few more steps, but guess what? I don't have to deal with that thought no more because if I'm really living according to the word, Jesus, y'all ready to go here? <sighs> Old Testament adultery is one thing. New Testament, when Jesus said, you've heard it said, thou shalt not commit adultery. I'm saying to you that if you even so much as look upon a woman with lust in your heart, you have already committed adultery with her in your heart. Jesus, Lord, have mercy. I will bless the Lord at all times. <laughs> His praise shall continually be in my mouth, right? Because I grew up hearing, you can look, but just don't. So I'm coming against that thought in the name of Jesus. I cast that vain imagination down. I don't care who told me, but Uncle, Uncle Slim was cool. And he the one told me that. But he also had three wives and got divorced eight times and, and got kids by 12 different women. And it's like, oh, Jesus. Okay, I got to check my source then. Okay. He must not been, he must not been doing this, right? Blessing the Lord. <laughs> at all times. His praise definitely wasn't continually in his mouth because he was he cussing and I mean he was cool but he was a cussing cool. He was a, he one of them cussing saints. Right? Because he was in church on Sunday. Looking good. Maybe that was praise the Lord. You get what I'm saying? So Golly, well, I got to check my source now. Where am I getting my information from? If the thought exalts, if, it, if the thought counteracts what the word says, if you look, you can look but just don't touch. Dog, Jesus just, I just read Jesus said, if I look at a woman with lust and I've done, then I've committed adultery, New Testament adultery. Then, Jesus, I got a new standard that I got to live by. Okay. All right. Are y'all with me now? Um, I guess today is just a review. So go, go ahead through. Now, I, I do need to give y'all a couple of new things, but go ahead. We'll finish this other list out real quick. And so we had um, materialism was got, is what got us off on that. Desire for power and control, complacency, and doubt and unbelief. All right? Those are some things that we have to overcome. And how do we overcome them? with the word. Jesus said, okay, Matthew 4, 4, what'd he say? It is written. See, I've been, you see, that's, we got lazy. That's what happened. We got lazy because we listening with our ears, but we're not committing stuff. And I've refused to bow down. And you know how they say, well, when you're giving a presentation, you want to keep it short and because really, only about 10% of what you say people really retain, 10 to 12%. Uh-uh, I'm not, uh-uh. We smarter than that, y'all. We just got a 1 Thessalonians 4-4. Come on. We got to possess our vessel with sanctification and honor. This is the moment we came here to learn about God. Or did we? that's the issue. You're just like, okay, I got to check myself to say, man, that's a whole, that's, I mean, life is long for to be going through the motions. You know, either I'm going to go all in or I'm just, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, I, I need to take it to the next level. How about that? Because we should be growing in faith, increasing in knowledge, right? Um, perfecting of the saints. Okay, uh, Ephesians 4 talks about the perfecting of the saints, right? 
So we we should be here, like, and, and it starts in the week, really. It starts on Saturday. It starts with, you know what, I need to not be out till 3 in the morning and then come give God my, you know, leftovers in that regard and can't have stay up through the whole service. Now, I understand folk work and you know what I mean, that you, you, I'm not talking about all that. I'm talking about what you have the power to control and say, you know what, okay, I need to possess this vessel, all right? Lord, give me the strength to be attentive and be, you know what I mean? Because I remember, I remember working all night and then going to church without having gone to sleep in between. Amen. And singing three services, praise team. At five o'clock in the morning, I'm getting, you know, we going from the south location to the east location to the north location. And I ain't been asleep in 24 hours at this point. You get what I'm saying? So I know the, the sacrifice and the challenge that, that exists, but there is no test, trial, or temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God will also he allow you to bear up under it. Some of us are, and then Second Corinthians, I mean, uh, I think it's First Corinthians 10, um, the scripture that we talk about, the, the grace of God, let me make sure, um, I think it's 10, 9. Um, because we really short changing our grace whenever we give excuses for what God said that we could overcome with. Uh uh. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 9. 6 through 8 talks about giving, right? But then 8, he says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always have it. all sufficiency in all things may abound. What does that abound mean? Get up. You can get up in a moment. I bet you if somebody walked in here right now and said, I got a million dollars for the first person that run around this building. <laughs> Y'all be a stampede. Be <laughs> right? Don't matter how much you worked last night, it doesn't matter. Praise the Lord. Guess what? I'm on bound to that good work, right? Because of the promise of it. And so now we have to see the word as the promise for our lives. Is that my quality of life is really going to depend on how much word I have to counteract the, the enemy's attack against me. Did y'all hear that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the word has to be enough. Okay? That may be what's going on with my voice. I got to stay in like one tone. Well, guess what? You don't get the benefit of the inflections and all of that to say, okay, to keep you awake and everything that speakers got to do to placate to the, the flesh. The word, we should be so hungry for the word that that alone drives us, just excites us. Like, okay, how many of y'all thinking I got work to do already? I can see it, I can see it. How many of y'all be honest to say, I don't have enough word that I, that I know in my heart? Yeah. So that was the challenge last week to say, okay, we gotta get some more word in our heart. And so for pastors, that mean, let's slow down. Let's slow down and get this word, right? Because if man lives by the word, then man needs more word to live by. Okay? What's some situations that are challenging in life? Right now, for you, just, just or in general, how about that? That way you don't put your business in the street. What's some situations that you need to overcome by the way, that people in general need to overcome by the word. Children. Children. So what's our scripture for that? Train up a child in the way they should go. When they're old, they won't depart from it, right? 
So as a, as a as a parent, guess what? Some of us dealing with not in our, this is not applicable to the person that said it. Just general again. Some of us are dealing with not having done that on the front end. And what we're dealing with on the back end is a, is a wordless child, is a, somebody that hadn't been trained up in the way they should go. And now we cussing and fussing because they don't want to act right, right? So if you got little ones, let me tell you, use, oh, Jesus, put the focus and the effort on training them up. Don't just depend on the pastor or the, the uh, once a week, um, you know, children's ministry. That's a daily thing. If you got, if if you are coming up to a standard of I will bless the Lord at all times, guess what you got to teach your children, baby. You, at all times, you need to be blessing the Lord. So when your friends are picking on other kids, guess what? You should be. Uh, uh-uh, that don't please God. His, you get what I'm saying? So you're training them up according to the word, right? Because if now here's the awesome part. When you train them up in the word, guess what the word says to the children? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, right? Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long on the earth, right? This, for this is the first commandment with promise. He's, he's attaching. So you send your kids to the word to get their answers, and guess what? They come back, and they, you may know, Mom, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have did that. I was reading in my Bible time, and I saw where the word says that I should honor you and what I did wasn't honoring. How many of y'all just would just fall out in your chair if your kids did that? <laughs> but we got to train them to what? To do that, right? What's some other challenging situation? You say finances? Okay, so uh, hold yours, finances. What's our finances? First of all, let's, let's address the need, right? But my God shall supply all of my needs according to what? His riches and glory. Y'all find it. Somebody tell me where is it? But my God shall supply all of my... So that, that let me know there was a story leading into it that it, it exposed the need that only God could supply. Is that where you find yourself when it comes to your finances? When you have needs, and our pastor would say, I remember my needs had needs. It's not, it's not. Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all of my needs. I knew that one, y'all. According to his riches and glory, right? So now it takes me and my ability out of my equation to say, wait a minute, hey, it's not just what I'm looking at right in front of me. According to his riches and glory, guess what? He's going to supply my needs. So I take my focus off of myself and put it on his supply. I take my focus off of my bank account and say, well, God, you say you're going to supply according to what you got. All of this is yours. So I'm, I'm standing on that word in Jesus' name. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know it will in Jesus' name. And, and so now my joy is back. I will bless the Lord at all times. I don't know where it's coming from, but his praise is going to continually be in my mouth. But you broke. Why are you happy you broke? I will bless the Lord. He's going to supply my need according to his riches and glory. Are you with me today? What else, you, what would you, the, the, another example? Family conflict. Family conflict, praise God. That's a, that's a big one. That's a, that's a wide subject, right? Is, okay, here's my go-to. Romans 8, 28. And this we know, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to his what? To his purpose. So that's your, that's your fallback one. When you don't have a direct one available, for, 
you know, you, you got a question mark, I'm not sure what's happening. But guess what? I, this I know. I'm going to do my part, which is, <laughs> what's my part in that equation, Romans 8, 28? Put it on the board for them. What is my part in that equation? So, those who what? Look at God. What are we talking about? They love Lee. <laughs> you sounded mad when you said it. It's like, they love Lee. Golly. Praise God. They love Lee. It's funny, y'all laughing. My kids know, so, you know, what's, what's the thing Pastor Jay say the most? Praise the Lord. Those that know me or be around me for any length of time, guess what you're going to hear pastor say? Praise, Praise the Lord. My kids now, they have now figured out what my praise the Lord's mean because <laughs> I stubbed my toe one time and I say, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or, I, you know, when I don't know what to do, Praise the Lord. Uh, when I when I just when that grant came through for thirty thousand dollars, praise the Lord, Hallelujah! You get what I'm saying? I will bless the Lord at all times. When that when that person cut me off the, last week that I told y'all about, guess what I said? Praise the Lord! <laughs> I was shaking my head when I was praise the Lord. Are you with me now? You can bless the Lord at all times. His praise can continually be in your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. When your wife call you for the fifth time to do something else, I'm about to get in trouble. Praise the Lord. <laughs> when your husband didn't do what you asked him to for the fifth time, <laughs> Y'all really getting in character. This is good. This is good. When your kids. Oh, Lord. I can't even get it out. I didn't say, oh, Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Are y'all with me? Because this we know that I can praise him now. Because if I really believe Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good, because some kids, they in their process. But if I have trained them up in the way they should go, even if they in the middle, doing stuff that they haven't been taught to do, the word says, when they, oh, when they get, th at some point, they coming back. And I can sit on the porch like the prodigal son's father and just wait. Here's the awesome part about what the prodigal son's father did. He was already waiting for him to come back and had restoration ready for him. You with me? So the word Pastor A on the prayer call this morning talking about we are responsible, Galatians 6, with, if we find a brother in a fault to restore them quickly, right? He was ready. I mean, as soon as the prodigal son returned. Now, he had, he had went off and burnt up his whole inheritance, y'all. Imagine that. You work your whole life to give your kids something, and they go off and burn it in like two months. And then come back talking about, Mama. We get to sit like the prodigal son's father and say, guess what? My son who was gone was lost, is now returned. We got a reason to praise, hallelujah. If, it's, if, if our life is all about material things and money, then that means they, they burnt off something that was more important to me than praising God. At the end of the day, what matters most, Jesus, is the people in our lives that God has called us to love like God loves us. So, 
Have you ever been to a sermon where you get to, uh, the title at the end? <laughs> this one was Love Others Better. We need to use the word to let love lead, and that's going to lead us into a journey where we are focused more than anything else on loving others better in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, I hope y'all took good notes because uh, that's it. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Y'all go ahead. Give God a praise. That's good. All right. Heads bowed, eyes are closed. Father, thank you for this, this word today. Thank you, Father God, for doing what you always do, Lord God. Uh, thank you for reaching us right where we are, Lord God, and uh, that nobody is lost and left behind. Uh, thank you that you led by example when you said you went after the 99 to go after the one. Uh, you, you left the 99 to go after the one, and uh, we thank you for that example, Lord God, so that uh, we can together move as a body into the perfected state that you are requiring of us. You said you're coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. So, we, Lord, we know we have a responsibility in that. Um, but thank you, Father, that you didn't put the ultimate responsibility on us, that you sent your son Jesus as a sacrifice for us, God, to help us, to redeem us, to wherever we found ourselves, God, to reinstate us and restore us and take the filthy rag that we had created and turn it white as snow with just one commitment, one decision. And that decision is to trust you with our life, to give you our heart. Your word says that if any man be in Christ, we are a new creature. Huh. Old things are passed away. Jesus, just like that. And all things are become new. Jesus, yes, I want that. I want that. Um, it's been there trying to rewrite some wrongs. Been there where I've tried to go back and figure out where I missed it. Been there where it's like I made a mess in so many situations that I can't even keep track of it anymore. But you're saying that all I have to do is come to you and I'll be made new. Where do I sign, Lord? Just tell me what to do. Well, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says <clears throat> that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and we make it personal, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in my heart, that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. And so huh, life transformation starts with the believing of reaching beyond myself and my natural comprehension to believe God that his son Jesus took on everything that I did on Calvary. And when he died, so did the old me Everything I did, he took it with him to the grave. And then when he rose from the dead, he rose with all power in his hand. So that means that I'm rising up after this decision with the power of God to live my life from this point forward. God, yes, that's what I want. If that's you today, hey, Every person in this room has been right there. And I want you to know that you are a monk's family and a, a group of loving believers that are right now rooting you on saying, come on, let this be the day. Come on, let this be the day. Just say yes to Jesus. Why? Because they know the day they said yes to Jesus, their life changed. And the old man went away for them too. Hallelujah. So 
we encourage you today. Say yes to Jesus. We'll change your life forever. With that said, we're going to say that simple prayer that we find in Romans 10. We're going to make it personal. And if you believe this in your heart as you're saying it, then that's it. Hey, new slate. God just wiped your record clean. And you can go forward from here, living life as a submitted Christian, a Christ-like follower of the Lord from this day forward. Would y'all repeat after me and everybody, would y'all repeat? Say, Father, without Jesus, I know I'm lost. I receive your son Jesus into my heart. Jesus, I call you Lord. From this day forward, I declare, <laughs> no more old me, only the new creature in Christ that you have made me in Jesus name amen anybody in here with your heads bowed and eyes closed said that prayer for the first time or as a rededication just wave your hand just wave your hand thank you I see your hand anybody else thank you I see your hand I see your hand anybody else praise God thank you I see your hand anybody else hallelujah hallelujah Old things pass away. New, new, in Jesus' name. Give God one more round of praise. Hallelujah.